So recently a user had asked on Discord how I would approach modeling a particular part and it turned out to be a pretty interesting study. So today we'll be talking about that quick part. So we'll start off deleting the cube and I'll just insert a cylinder. With the cylinder, I'm just gonna select the bottom face and press Alt and flip the normals. And that means that whenever I control click mark, it'll um, actually do a reverse bevel, giving me something that bows out instead of going in. We'll perform a sharpen on it just to get looking right. And we'll shift to add another cylinder because nothing really changed from the first one. And I'm just going in edit mode and grabbing the middle and then just extruding it out. And that'll be enough for this. And so I select both parts, press Q and choose intersection. And we see that it doesn't work out. And that's because I'm under fast. If we go to exact, it fails just a little bit less, but still fails. So with this shape, I'm going to press Q, go ahead and clean the mesh, clean it up real good. And we could just scale this up a little bit. And it looks like we're getting a little added, added bonus from the Boolean. Uh, fast and exact can be a little variable. However, there is a panel at the top called the, the Bev Bull helper area. And here you can actually change for bevel, go to Boolean, or even display both at the same time. But here you can change everything to be fast or exact just to see how the Booleans on a particular shape would react. Sometimes when a Boolean fails, I'll just switch it over to exact real fast just to see if it fares better. But most of the time I keep things on fast just to keep things operating fast, especially if I'm trying to keep it live. But in order to progress this shape, we will definitely need to begin applying. So I'm just going to uh, shift click smart apply and that will apply it on a duplicate that I can just press GZ and move, but my mouse got off screen, so it moved up a little high. And the first thing we'll need to do is a little reconstruction. So using F2 built into Blender, it's pretty easy to uh, fill an area. Also the sharpening is a little tragic, so I'm just going to control shift click, sharpen in order to do what's called resharpen. And then we look at the side where everything's pretty destroyed. So selecting here, and then control clicking to say here. We'll just Q and mark it. And we have our shape looking better. We can Alt X, uh, put a bisect mod on it and split it to the other side just for this moment since we're dealing with it on a modeling level. And we see that our line is um, you know, almost smooth, but it's a little broken. So first things first, let's get in here and clean up. When it comes to the edit multi-tool, if I press control K, we can go to properties and talk about how my default tool entry is under select, but you can also have it jump you into merge like the moment you jump into the edit multi-tool. So now when I shift click mark, um, shift click mark, I'm now inside of merge where I can just click and drag some areas, just start cleaning them up just a little bit. Just give this geometry a fighting chance right here, hard decision to make. We'll just pull everything here. And we also have the ability to control to slide. So that comes in handy whenever you're doing a lot of uh, merging and changing of geometry. This area is questionable, but we'll let it live. This area will also consolidate just a little bit. Everything else is looking fine. So we'll press spacebar and apply. And getting this back smooth is the tricky part. So for me, because I have mirror tools installed, I can just go to curve stretch and we can set this to something like five. And when we click, and just cancel. We see that that's been smoothened out. However, there are some issues when it comes to the shading. So, you know, by no means um, am I aiming for perfection, but I could definitely mitigate some of the shading issues that are occurring. Usually I'll do that by just kind of getting in and playing with Mark a little bit. However, I could also fix the shading by resolving the doubles that are happening right here. There's always something geometric behind it. However, I wanted to merge at last, not at first. So now we have something that's looking a little more presentable. In fact, if the Boolean was still live, like it was on this shape, I could still go in and modify it in edit mode in order to move things, just uh, kind of keeping an eye on the clock here. So let's just continue on with this shape. And I don't even want to go in local mode for this. Uh, we'll shift D, bring it up make another iteration of it and if we control tilde we can look at our sharp settings where we don't have sharp marked uh, as seams so now that we have a seam marked here i can just use face mode bring this area down have a loop go across 
and everything else is actually pretty fine. I could put a couple loops here just to kind of equalize it, but really it's not needed. And then if needed, I could uh, bridge these across in order to just kind of hold that surface better, but really it's not necessary. The next thing from here, since it's still a cylinder, we'll draw a circle on the top face and bring it down. And we see that we broke one of the rules. And that is that our modifier is actually concealing a shape that is non-manifold. Not only is it non-manifold, there's this big old face up in here. You know, don't tell anybody you saw that, all right? Uh, one time there's a t-shirt made of me because of some hidden geometry. We won't talk about that. So I will go ahead and just turn off sort bypass for this. I hope to someday change it to just adding spaces in order to bypass sort, but now we can just extract this down. So as long as you have an awareness of your modifiers and how it's being evaluated by the Boolean, because as far as the Boolean is concerned, it sees a manifold mesh because the mirror modifiers are being pushed above. Another way we could also bypass it is to add another mirror. So if I press Alt X and press A, I can add another modifier. And then if we mirror it on the Y, we now have a dual modifier situation. So that means that if I cut it anywhere, it now evaluates it as a manifold mesh, even though its base is non-manifold. So let's just go through Everscroll and recall this shape and we'll just give that a reverse bevel. And for the bottom face, we will do the same thing once I'm able to select it. And I suppose these aren't needed anymore. They're just horrible reminders. And so we'll just bring that one up. And so the next thing, you know, when I was playing with this was I selected this edge and then shift clicked on EM macro. However, at the time I had a, a manifold mesh. I see that there's a interior face right here and right here that will need to be removed. But yeah, macro is a fun time. So, and I'm just shift clicking it to use the version of it that pertains to Edge. These are just uh, interactive versions of a classic tool that existed within hard ops, just kind of all combined into one as a final send off to them. But they definitely come in handy as you see here. So the next thing I like to do is just start working down the back. I mean, this thing I think is some sort of like stock for a gun, but I've just been messing with shapes on it. You know, it's always uh, exploration with me and playing with problems and solutions. So we're just going to perform a few more cuts. We see that this one caused a shading issue and that's because our normal threshold isn't high enough. Um, you know, S sharpen used to be the way to go, but now I'm telling you that shift clicking to use auto smooth is pretty much no holds barred the easiest way to deal with your shading. And we also see that the shading got a little compromised, so we could put a little bit of additional geo there just to mitigate it, get through the day. Uh, we could get creative with the weld, but believe me, it's not worth it. So continuing on, we also see that if we just had a loop going across, we would have a nice snap point. So let's go ahead and just do that. Sometimes I just hack snapping by just adding dots, just like you see there. It's not a big deal. You know, sometimes you just need a little help with the dot system. That's what geometry is for. I could have also used active only and had like some guide geometry, but I'm just trying to make it through today here. So let's get through ever scroll, jump to box. And from here, we'll bring a circle in shift it to live, select its back face, do a reverse bevel. Reverse bevel was almost in this latest release of box cutter, but I feel that with a little more polish, it can be absolutely perfect. So we'll be getting around to it. Also, I think in lieu of all the other things in the update log, it would have uh, possibly distracted from all the improvements done with snapping and orientation. So much work has gone into orientation and snapping that uh, I'd like for it to get its shine. So I'm going to shift click curve extract in order to, I guess, get nothing. Let's try it again. All right, there we go. That's the desired result. However, we have a bunch of additional bullets that we don't want. So let's just um, shift click to go into modifiers and we'll just leave it as an unmodified mesh. Maybe turn on mirror. I'll press tab to turn on the interactive version and we'll just turn on solidify. 
and we can just click and apply, press control A, visual geometry. And with this, we can now just give it a degree of solidification, unless it didn't need it. Actually, I might have applied to solidify. So let's um, select this outside edge, delete everything else, solidify back inside, add a new bevel on it. And it looks a little faceted. I'm pretty big on uh, no faceting, so I'll just select everything. Shift tilde to select boundaries. It's one of the few hotkeys I manually map is select boundary loop, where I can quickly mark it, put a subdivision on it, and we're good to go there. In fact, I could start really working on this shape if I wanted to. However, it would be nicer to add one additional bevel level, press one to kind of fix the shading. And we'll just draw a shape across. And first point snapping, just just great. I love it. I don't, I don't even need it all the time, but having a suggestive dot uh, was the final touch that we added. Originally, it was going to have nothing. It's like, you know, people aren't even going to notice as a thing that we did unless there's um, some sort of system for it. So same thing. I'm just going to uh, shift click modifiers, press tab, and we'll just start scrolling to just activate the first one. Turn on solidify. In fact, let's not turn on solidify. Let's just click to apply, control A, get rid of all those other modifiers. You know, sometimes I just use um, what's fastest available at my hands. Sometimes that's just visually applying and then rebuilding your stack on the fly just because it's a lot quicker. So now that we have this done, let's bring this in, take a look at what we have. Let's also do a little extra. Always got to go a little further every time unscripted in these videos. I'm already at 12 minutes. We'll wrap it by 20. So I will shift C. My cursor is already in the center, so it's fine. If I control click radial array, we can now set up a radial array on this and just kind of eat at the ring that we put on the back. But just like that, also a little, little shading E there. That's not going to fly. Let's just put a weld on it, roll it a little bit, and it's good to go. If we really wanted to perfect the shading, we could also um, put a few loops inside of there. But whenever it came to making the shape, I didn't actually progress it to having a bevel modifier. I mean, I ended up doing some stuff on the bottom where I, you know, of course, added a few more circles, shifted them to live, selected the top face, control clicked mark to put a reverse bevel. You know, and then I always like doubling back and testing our join capabilities by joining a shape and then bringing it out and then going back to cut because I didn't directly switch to join. I just used it for just a moment, which is important to delineate. And we could just press X, get that as a slice. And our orientation is just going nuts there. So I knew that wasn't going to work. When you grab a surface normal, the surface normal is the rule now. So if you play off the mesh, you have view, which is always a useful thing to have, no matter what view you're in. And, you know, we could actually draw another box, just slice this whole thing off and do something like QOT space, go to plane. I'm still using V2. I'm always testing both versions of two shape. They're, they're both just so great and perform a difference. And just like that, we can wrap this up. However, let's say I wanted to make this impossible. Let's say I wanted to deal with the bevel because the bevel is not going to play with that. And you know, any, any astute viewer is going to be aware of that. Uh, Blender, hates things converging into flat faces whenever it comes to the bevel modifier. So let's find out. Also, we have a lot of modifiers going on. Not even a lot. You know, we used to get up to 300 with the classic box city, right? So let's control click it. Let's get it looking good in one of these areas that matters. That's an issue. You know, instead of ever scroll, I'm just going to use hop stots. This message brought to you by kid hop Synth by kid Opsent. but we'll just use hop stops, bring that cutter back, adjust it. Everything looks so far so good, except that, you know, the edges are a bit eviscerated. So what if we 
went back into bevel and we pressed uh, L, switched over to weight. So now we have it beveled on everything that is marked by weight, which means it's not going to be grabbed by the um, real geometry. But we do want to put a few segments in there. And what if we actually put another bevel on top of it, like control click bevel? And we put it at 30, so we want to roll that up so we don't eat our other bevels. It's kind of hard to see. But just a moment ago, that was going on, which means I was beveling my bevels. Nobody ever wants that. So now I have two bevels stacked up. And I would say this shape is actually looking pretty good. I didn't even slap a weight normal on it yet. And really, to grab this back area, we do have to bring the angle down a bit, which is going to cause us to have to bevel our other bevels. So we could control scroll, jump to the first segment count, and just increase it to something astronomical. I'm not a big fan of having, actually, I'm not even trying to move my modifier like that. There we go. So now we have something just a little more acceptable. So, I mean, bevel's always hard mode when it comes to adding it to certain shapes. And when it comes to, you know, flatty transitions, that's where you have to get a little bit more destructive in your solutions. Also, looks like our width is just a little too high. All right, let's actually evaluate this. Sometimes I'd rather move a cutter than lower my width. I don't know about you, it's just me. Like sometimes I really need the bevel to show a certain amount. And that's where, you know, fighting a cutter is a more worthy battle. So we'll place it right there. But I'm going to control click weld and roll it until it starts eating some bevels lunches and see if we can rise it up in the stack just to ease some of these transitions and it's not going to work it's actually eating areas that aren't being seen but perfection with keeping everything live and in balance is always a struggle especially if you want a large bevel but here we are this thing's just been destroyed so divide by two maybe divide by two again let's check the topmost bevel and that has brought it back to acceptable non-fatal level so with that i've now modeled this gun part or something um over the course of 20 minutes just wanted to do something fun just talk about some basic tools you know we could select everything uh control click material scroll and really just start rolling through some combination of colors on this thing it had to hang for a second i thought it was going to crash you know that would have been another talk in itself but um, with that, we can then jump into look dev mode. I don't know where all this lag is coming from all of a sudden. You know, we'll roll this until we actually get a material that's acceptable. You know, that dark one really looked good, spoke to me. Uh, let's control click material scroll on this. Press all PV. Find a couple of schemes here. Let's snap our cursor here. And let's press alt V B. Roll the cursor a couple of times. But, you know, I've had to present so many Q boxes recently that I've been just so used to pressing Q, O, T, spacebar, plane, scrolling the wheel down once. S, Y, S, 50, uh, Alt M, blank material, and just setting up things in a presentable state. But, you know, we could go even further with this and alt vb again and really find the lighting setup that speaks to us here i don't know some some about blue dabba dee dabba die uh just really um makes me want to wrap on this but on that note we can call this video complete and i thank everyone for watching and i'll see you guys next time i see that there is some sort of angle to the back so let's have a little fun in trying to add that so i'm just going to select the floor press h turn overlays back on Shift click the eyeball for light empty so it hides all the uh, associated things. And we'll just select all the shapes and press QOT. And let's see what convex gives us. Sometimes convex gives us a gift. Um, let's look at the shape, look at convex, look at the shape, look at convex. What are we going for? You know, do we even need this? No, no we don't. Um, you know what we do need though is a box, QOT. With, with an active selection QOT and we'll just select these two bottom faces, invert, delete everything else, 
key, Alt S. And we're not really going for perfection with the outside. However, my OCD tells me I should do something about that. You know, just a little S SX zero. Also, why am I working in render mode like a weirdo? Uh, let's save this as um, that, I guess. And I'm just going to control click mark. And we'll just bring up some sort of angle. And I'm, I'm just telling you, this is going to be a nightmare on everything involved and regrettable. So let's select this piece. It let us live. So can't fault that. So let's select the next piece. We continue to live. And I think that's mission accomplished. I mean, not completely. We would have to go back under bevel where we're playing with the angle and rolling the angle down slightly. We could get it to hold, but we also begin to challenge the integrity of some of these other areas. So let's look at what modifiers we have in our stack here. You know, sometimes it's nice to just not have a big stack, but you know, that's heresy. And let's just roll some mod. Ooh, too much rolling and that might be as good as it gets without us having to apply and do a little geometric correction but now we have the little lip in the back however you know I'll never be satisfied with how it gets with the bevel unless we were to apply this and specifically create a flow going linearly in a direction it flows in a way that I find to be advantageous to the bevel but that's what happens anyways with that, we can now truly wrap up this video. Just wanted to put a little angle in the back there uh, because I was looking at the original thread so I can uh, post it as an overlay. And never mind. See you guys next time.